Good morning. So this will be the first video uh, on spectroscopy. This will be in chapter 15 and 16. Uh, I'm just going to put up, uh, this is just a little tutorial, I'm going to put up the regions you ought to know uh, in an infrared spectrum. So I'll talk in class and you can read in the book about what an infrared spectrum is. Basically we're going to pass infrared light through a sample. Uh, the molecules in that sample will absorb some of the wavelengths depending on what functional groups are present and you will see then an absorbance in the spectrum and from that you can determine what functional groups are in the molecule. So first of all, like I said, we're going to pass infrared spectrum. So on the on the left, and again, I'm going to say this a lot, every spectrum you're ever going to see is going to be some sort of uh, percent transmittance, absorbance, signal intensity of some sort. So intensity on the y-axis and energy on the x-axis. Sometimes they switch depending on the, the field. In infrared spectroscopy, we basically have wavelength, uh, sorry, we have uh, frequency on the bottom uh, in reciprocal centimeters. And so uh, you can go back and study your physics. Frequency and wavelength have an inverse relationship. And energy goes up as wavelength comes down as frequency goes up. So uh, a shorter wavelength photon has more energy than a longer wavelength photon. Uh, so this is frequency. So 4,000 wave numbers has more energy than 1,500 wave numbers. And we have 500 way down here on the end. So then you're going to have, you know, a spectrum might look something like, like this. And then I'll talk more about this region. You think I'm just crazy drawing all that. I wonder how close I got there. Pretty, not bad. So here might be a typical spectrum. Percent transmittance versus uh, reciprocal centimeters. And so uh, if you look in the textbook, so on page 700 and 701 in the textbook, actually page 701, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, there's a table, table 15.2. It's got a bunch of numbers and functional groups. And if you could learn that entire thing, that'd be great. But uh, you don't really need to. Uh, there'll be a few, like I said, there'll be a few diagnostic things that I'll want you to know and the rest of it uh, you should be able to look up. So first thing, down here, way to the left, Basically, in this, this region are OH and NH single bond stretches. And so again, when infrared light hits a molecule, if the light is absorbed, there has to be a physical change in the molecule. And so uh, in infrared spectroscopy, that physical change tends to be the vibration levels of certain bonds. And so an OH bond will be, tend to be fairly broad. Uh, an NH bond will be a little sharper. Uh, and they'll be fairly intense. Likewise then, uh, CH stretching uh, is a little bit lower energy and in fact it's centered right around 3,000 wave numbers. So if you draw this line, uh, this is just a quirk, there's no physical meaning to this, but it turns out that SP3CH comes just to the right of 3,000 and sp2ch just to the left. So these little niggets here might be uh, an sp2ch, this big long one, the more intense one would be sp3ch, and that's because in almost all organic molecules with sp2ch bonds, there's gonna be more sp3ch's. You have a, a pretty big region in here that will usually be vacant uh, where you'll find triple bond stretches. So carbon nitrogen triple bonds tend to show up fairly intensely. Uh, and then carbon carbon triple bonds are less intense, but also in that region. And then you have uh, C double bond O stretches uh, that run mostly from about, this is gonna be from about 1650 to 1800 wave numbers. And like I said, in the book, the book tends to break up all the different carbonyls, uh, so that's a carbonyl bond, right? And it'll say, you know, an aldehyde and a ketone are, are down at around 1700, 
Uh, an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde will be about 1650. Acid and hydrides, chlorides, that kind of thing tend to get out closer to uh, 1800. For right now, to start, like I said, ultimately by the final say, if you could have that table pretty much in hand, uh, you'll be in good shape. For right now, to just your first foray into IR spectroscopy, just learn that carbonyls show up intensely in this region. Okay. Uh, and then you have sort of carbon-carbon double bonds, and this is going to be about 1500 to 1650. And I, actually this, one thing I hate about the book, any book uh, in spectroscopy, is they give you really way too well-defined regions. So they're going to say like 1640 to 1680. And in fact, if you go look at real molecules, they often fall outside that range. They're basically giving you the range in the book of the most likely places to find it. So carbon-carbon double bonds, 1500 to 1700. There's a little bit of overlap with the carbon-oxygen double bond. For reasons we'll talk about in class and that you can look up in the book, the more polar a bond is, OH, NH, carbonyl, really polar bonds tend to, be more, tend to give more intense uh, absorbances. So a single carbonyl will usually kind of peg down to the bottom of percent transmittance. A single OH will usually be as intense as all the CHs. And then down here uh, you have what's called the fingerprint region. Uh, so this would be less than 1500 wave numbers. The fingerprint region is sort of uh, self-explanatory. Every molecule will have uh, a different finger, different uh, set of absorbances or percent T in that in that region. And you can, if you have a standard, so if, let's say I have ethyl acetate, I can take an infrared of an unknown. I can compare the fingerprint regions. If they're exact, it's ethyl acetate. If they're not exact, it's not ethyl acetate. However, you have to have the standard. If you don't already have a standard. Well, then it's pretty useless. It's like getting a finger. If you have a fingerprint uh, from a crime scene, but you don't have anything to compare it to, that fingerprint does you no good. So you have to be able to compare it to something. And what you'll find is there's just a bunch of stuff in the fingerprint region. So out here, it's like one band, one band, one band. And then all of a sudden, it's just a, a hodgepodge. Um, and so my advice is for now, as you first begin to do this, sort of don't pay much attention to what's in the fingerprint region. Uh, the book, again, like I said, the bottom of that, that table I showed you on page 701 has a bunch of stuff in the fingerprint region. My advice is look at it, but don't, don't hang your hat on any of that stuff because it can be really hard to interpret and there's a lot of other stuff that can overlap with it. All right, so for now, just to get started in spectroscopy, this is what I want you to know. So basically hit pause, copy this down, commit these regions to memory, uh, watch this again if you want. Um, like I say, you, you do need to know this stuff.